Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Nay Penda. If you are tuned in today, I'm going to be using the new Anastasia Beverly Hills Norvina palette. I'll be doing an eyeshadow tutorial as well as a review and letting you guys know how well it works on dark skin. If it works at all, y'all gonna see the screen. If you're interested, be sure to keep on watching. Subscribe, subscribe, and give this video a big thumbs up. Let's get into it. So here are some swatches of that bottom row which is full of mattes. Um, for the most part, the first four going this way swatched pretty well, but the deeper it got, the harder it was to kind of get the pigment to show up. The shimmer shades are really, really pretty. They swatched very pigmented. They were buttery and smooth, and I did not have to build them in order for them to show up on my skin. So I really fell in love with the way that these shimmers looked. The first shade that I'm going to go in with is Eccentric. I had already primed my lids with the MAC Paint Pot and Groundwork. So I was just putting this color on top to set that primer so that I could blend other shadows on top. As you guys could see, this shade didn't really have too much um, of a color payoff on me. It kind of just blended right into my skin, which I didn't mind because it was just to set my primer. The next shade that I went ahead with was Love. Love is kind of like a pastel pink, and this is one mistake that I made is I immediately started swiping as soon as I placed it onto my eyelid. Whenever you put colors on your lid, you wanna pat it first and get the pigment on and then start blending. Um, but regardless, the color didn't really show up on me, so I had to go in with a deeper color anyway, which was the next shade I picked up, Soul. Soul ended up being a mistake as well, just because I didn't realize that it had sheen to it. Because it was on the matte side or the matte section of the palette, I thought that it was going to be completely matte, but it wasn't, so I had to keep looking at the monitor, and I was looking in the mirror just to make sure I wasn't bugging, um, and I wasn't. So it definitely is a sheen color, um, but I decided to just keep using it because it was one of the darker shades in that matte palette. I was really contemplating life at that moment. <laughs> um, but yeah, I went ahead and I kept blending it onto my lid. It is a pretty color, but just not for my transition. And I feel like it did look a little gray because of how cool tone it was as well. So I was a little frustrated at this part. Next, I went ahead with Passion, which I felt like saved the entire look. When I first put Passion on, I started to notice that, one, it was pigmented just like the rest of the shadows, but it was actually showing up on my lid. So what you're going to do is you're just going to take that shadow and you're going to place it onto your lid and then just blend from left to right. I started from the bottom and then I started blending upwards in order to mix Passion with Soul, um, which ended up giving me a pretty color. Then I went back in into Eccentric in order to blend out the ends of my lid, but also to blend out that area right underneath my brow bone um, and, just mix the, and just mix all of the colors together. Next, I went ahead and used my MAC Paint Pot and Groundwork in order to cut my crease. I looked up so that I could get the line precisely where my crease was. When it comes to placing concealer or primer on your lid, um, the best reason or the main reason why people use it a lot of the times is either to get a cut crease look or to place shimmers on top because the shimmers will have something to cling onto, which is why I decided to use it here today. And I'm just really taking my time when it comes to cutting my crease and when it comes to placing that concealer on just because I don't want to make a mistake. The next thing I did is I went back into Passion to deepen up the area above where I cut my crease so that I could have a little bit more dimension um, just because I like the way it looks when that top line before you cut your crease is darker. Next I'm going in with the shade Rose Gold. Rose Gold was so freaking pretty. Like I was finally at this point of the tutorial starting to get happy. I had to look and make sure I wasn't bugging and make sure that it was translating well on camera because I was just like wait. Is this palette finally starting to work for me? Like, look, I'm, I was skeptical. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I went ahead and I placed Rose Gold on my lid. Then I went in with Celestial and I placed that in the middle to kind of give it like an ombre look. Um, when it comes to placing this color on, you just want to pack it first and then swipe. So you just place, 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 and then swipe. So pack, and then swipe it over. Next, I went ahead to use the shade Drama, and I'm putting that on the end of my lid. This was just kind of like an ombre kind of look that I was going for with these shades. And once I placed it onto my lid again, I just patted and then swiped it out. 
I went back in with passion to try to deepen it, but it really didn't do much. So I kind of just kept it pushing. Sidebar, you guys noticed in my last video I said, oh, nobody wants to be a fine girl with no pimple. Well, guess who woke up with pimples on their face two days later? Be careful what you wish for. Um, So I started to notice that I didn't have as, as much dimension above my crease as I wanted. So I decided to take this NYX purple liner and kind of just draw a line above um, my crease. So that there could be a darker shade or a shade that showed up darker. When it comes to using liners, you kind of do have to have a steady hand. I don't have a steady hand. And because I don't have a steady hand and I'm aware of that, I always take my time. That is the key when it comes to liners. When you are not someone that has a steady, steady hand, it's take your time. So even with the black liner that I'm putting on to kind of lay my wing, you can see that I'm doing it in very, very small sections. And taking my time with it so that I don't mess up once I closed that wing liner I decided I wanted to add another liner on top of that black liner so I went in with a pink liner right above the black when it comes to applying this pink liner what you want to do is make sure that you don't go too high it's okay if you go a little lower than you intend because you can just go back in with that black liner and fix it but if you go in too high you're gonna mess up that base that you already set with those shimmer shades so just take your time. And if you notice, I looked up prematurely and I kind of got a little bit of that pink liner right above um, that purple crease. So I am going to fix that just by going back in with Celestial and putting it right above um, that pink liner. Now I'm going back in and fixing wherever I went too low with my pink liner by applying my black. Then I'm gonna go ahead and put on some mascara to get ready to apply my lashes. And once I applied the lashes, I went back in again just to make sure that you couldn't see my lash band um, by using that black liner. At this point, I was just kind of looking to see what else I wanted to do to the look. And I noticed that um, with these NYX liners, they kind of do crack, or not kind of, they do crack a lot. So I went back over it with another coat just to get rid of the cracking that was already happening. Um, so just be careful whenever you're using these NYX Vivid Liners. Next, I just went ahead and blended out that area right beneath my brow bone. If you guys remember, I was placing Eccentric there and a little bit of Soul and Passion. So I just wanted to blend it to make sure that there was no harsh lines. Um, and there weren't because the colors barely showed up. So yeah, that's the eye look. Next, I'm going in with Celestial. And there's no rules to makeup. So I'm using the eyeshadow Shimmer as a highlighter. So I did it on my high cheekbones and also underneath my brow bone. And then I also placed that same color on my inner lid to finish up the look. All right, now that we're done with this tutorial, let's go ahead and get into the review. So when it comes to purchasing this foundation, I think that there are three major things that you really want to think about. First is going to be price, second is going to be usage, and then third is going to be makeup style. So when it comes to price and usage, for me, when I buy anything, I'm asking myself, I'm paying this amount for it, but how much am I going to be able to use it? Like, what am I going to get out of it? Am I getting my money's worth? For this Novena palette, there's 14 shades in here, which means that each shadow is about $3. So if you're someone that's fair, light, or medium, you're going to be able to use all 14 of the shades, and $3 per shadow is not that bad. You're going to be able to get the full usage for the amount that you're paying. If you're someone that's darker like me, I had a little bit of a hard time with using most of the matte shadows. There was only one matte shadow that really showed up on my eye and my crease that gave me the definition that I was looking for so that means that I'll be able to use the shimmers and that one matte shade so that's only eight shadows out of the 14 making it 525 per shadow and that's a little bit more expensive than the three dollars per shadow so I'm not getting full usage out of the palette for the price what I will say however is that I didn't try using any of those matte shades on my lid so I'm wondering if I played around with the shadows a little bit more and played around with the palette a little bit more and used like a white primer and then did like an all matte cool tone look how it would be different so I do have to play around with the palette a little more in order to be able to answer that question of if price matches usage but for right now I'm gonna say no based on the look that I did today so once you factor in price and usage and how it works for you, you want to think about your makeup style. Do you like neutral colors, cool tone colors, or shimmers? What do you like when it comes to makeup? If you know that you're someone that doesn't like bright colors, you're just trying to learn how to do makeup or you like something more neutral, there's no need for you to get this palette. 
but if you are someone that likes to be creative and you like just trying different styles and you just love makeup in general this is something that you kind of want to have because Anastasia is known for their great formulas this is actually my second time doing this look the first time I did it was for the eyeshadow tutorial but then I hated my intro and my outro so I refilmed I'm refilming and I recreated the look so I've played with the palette twice so I can really really give you guys my pros and cons and I took some notes so as far as the pros the pigment it picks up really easily second pro is going to be how well it blends the third pro is going to be the shimmers you do not need a spray in order for them to show up and then the fourth pro is going to be that the formula of the palette is really buttery so when I first swatched it it just felt really really buttery and I think that helped it when it came to blending now let's get into the cons so some of these cons aren't necessarily cons for me but they might be a con for you so one of the cons would definitely be the kickback as I was using the palette I kept having to like blow it in order to get the kickback that was coming out off of it and that does make the palette messy which is a second con but me personally I don't really care about the palette getting dirty and I really don't care about kickback as long as the pigment is there and as long as I can blend it but if that's something that affects you those are two cons one of the biggest cons for me was the color soul because it has such a sheen to it and I don't really want to use a sheen in my crease like I feel like in my crease I want to use matte shades so when I put that on my eye I wasn't expecting it to be that shimmery or that shiny so I was a little disappointed by that color um and that's really it so for the cons it's just going to be the kickback the color soul is my biggest biggest concern and how messy the palette can get do I regret buying it personally no but I love makeup I love Anastasia Beverly Hills and I love their formula so I feel like any palette that they come out with nine times out of ten I'm gonna get it if I like the colors within it um so I don't regret it personally now is it dark skin friendly half and half the shimmers are definitely dark skin friendly and that one matte shade is definitely dark skin friendly but for the other matte shades showing up in your crease definitely not they're not gonna show up the colors it was either that they were too close to my skin tone or they kind of gave off like a gray cast but that grayness comes from the fact that it's a cool tone shade so it doesn't really look the best I would say on my crease or on my eye thank you guys so much for watching this video I want you guys to comment down below and let me know what you thought of the eyeshadow look and also what do you think of the palette do you think it is dark skin friendly do you think it's not do you think it's worth the $42 let me know your thoughts make sure you go ahead and subscribe and I hope to see you guys here on Wednesday in case you didn't know I do post every Wednesday and every Sunday and you can also follow me on Instagram and Twitter to see other makeup looks and just to get to know me a little bit more make sure you subscribe I think I said subscribe like three times in this tutorial but subscribe okay bye guys